Welcome back to the lab today, guys. Today, I'm going to be going over something that's kind of interesting and it kind of has to deal with uh, the future videos of what we're going to be going over with uh, VDI and some larger scale enterprise things. And what we're going to be going over today is what is high availability and failover. And we're going to be discussing what those two things are and what exactly they mean. So stick around. All right, so to begin, guys, we're going to be going over two things today on this video. We're going to be going over what is high availability and what is failover. So to begin, I want to go over high availability. High availability is the characteristic of a system which it aims to ensure an agreed level of operational performance, all right, and usually like uptime and things like that is higher than a normal period. So a lot of times if you think about, you know, data centers like Azure and Amazon and, you know, think about your internet service providers, things like that, they run high availability systems. And what that means is that they're required to meet certain uptimes and required to, you know, have certain SLAs and things to be done and, or, or you know, they have to be kept online for a certain amount of time depending on what the customer wants. It's, it kind of gets kind of crazy. But to break it simply, high availability just means that you have more than just what's needed. You actually have what they call redundancy. And high availability can range from a host to a firewall to storage to switches to, I mean, you name it, it we can set up high availability. The main high availability, though, that I want to talk today and kind of get in perspective is, I guess, host virtualization high availability. All right. So, what it means, high availability and host virtual, or I guess I should say virtualization, means the ability to be able to say that. Anything that happens, we can go ahead and we have high availability, meaning that we have enough hardware to cover that if one piece of hardware were to go down, there's still enough power and resources for all the systems to go ahead and be able to work and not, and not have any issues. Now, the big thing is here is high availability doesn't mean guaranteed uptime always, all right? There can be failures, all right? And that's what a failover is, okay? So there's different types of high availability. You have proactive high availability and reactive high availability, all right? Proactive high availability goes in and it tries to look at the problem before it happens. It tries to react before there's any downtime necessary. And it's kind of crazy. There is proactive HA now available in 6.7 and above, and I think it may even be on 6.5. And what it allows it to do is it actually proactively tries to predict failures of either any host modules, storage, networking, or anything that may happen in a high availability cluster. So say you had three hosts, which, you know, a lot of people take three hosts. That's what the essentials gives you. Put those three hosts in a vSAN or, you know, you put them in a SAN cluster, whatever, shared storage. And you have them then set up in a HA or a high availability cluster which means that you're pulling them resources together and you're telling your vCenter server, hey, these three machines are all kind of the same. They all work together. And what that means is that any guest operating systems make sure that they stay running on these systems, even if one of them goes down. And that's where failover comes in. All right. Now, failover happens on reactive high availability. OK, so that's different than proactive high availability is that reactive high availability is when you have failover and failover is exactly what a guest will do or a system it usually will fail over. So in terms of reactive high availability, a system will fail over such an event if a system were to go down. So let me show you right here. Over on my left hand side, I have my third host right now. If you notice, it's got a yellow triangle next to it. That's because I actually had a high availability and it wasn't a pro proactive, it was a reactive one, which means I had some systems go down. But what happened was my NIC died. I had one of my quad NICs that runs my iSCSI died in this system. When that happened, all those machines turned off. Well, vCenter noticed that, and as soon as it noticed they all went offline, it moved the machines off of VMH03, unlocked them and everything, their VMX files, moved them over between VMH01 and 02, and split the load between them. That's how failover works. All right, so what failover means is that if they were to fail, if they were to crash, die, burn, something were to happen to them, they then would just fail over to another available host in the high availability group or the high availability cluster, I should say, and that would allow them to continue operating. Now, yes, there is a little bit of downtime because you will have to go ahead and actually tell it to continue, or um, I should say, you'll have to actually go through the boot process of the system again, because what's going to happen is it can't proactively move it and keep its system state intact. So that system state is going to die on a failover. That's all right, though, because when that when that happens, it gets moved over by vCenter and instantly booted back up. 
Now, depending on the boot time of the system, what your storage is, you know, a lot of different things, you could be down for two, three minutes, you could be down for 20 minutes. But at least that availability of you being able to just to move the system real quick to another host and decrease downtime, that's what a lot of people love about high availability. So that's it, guys. That's the video for today. That's the difference between high availability and, you know, what is failover and the differences between proactive and reactive high availability. Hope this, you know, help you guys learn some things. And if not, top, drop a comment down below. Let me know. Maybe I didn't explain something right. Maybe, you know, I could explain more. Always happy to have uh, any, uh, you know, comments or concerns. Constructive criticism is great. I, I wouldn't be where I am without it. So go ahead. Let me know down below. And as always, subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what you're working on. Until then, I'll see you guys in the lab.